Multimodal models that incorporate text and images are unlocking new AI systems that are much more capable and powerful. These methods are trained using massive datasets of paired samples, such as images and their associated captions. This paired data gives us a ground truth that we can use to learn common representations. To learn these representations, we shuffle the images and texts and force the model to find embeddings that align the text captions and their associated images. So the ground truth matching is the supervision signal that allows us to learn representations of text and images that are aligned such that specific captions are matched with specific images. But what happens if we don't have matched pairs? Let's run a thought experiment. We're working with images and captions, but this time they aren't matched exactly. Something went wrong and we ended up saving images and captions separately in folders grouped by class label. Without the ground truth, it's hard to match the images and captions with the detailed granularity we had before. We can still learn that images of dogs are associated with captions of dogs, but we're unable to describe the specific details of the image. We don't have the level of granularity that can tell us that this specific photo is of a dog sledding in Japan. Although this was just a thought experiment, you can see that without matching, we lose a lot of shared information. This is the challenge that we face with scientific experiments in biology. We often want to take multiple measurements in the form of different modalities from the same cell because collectively they give us a more complete picture of the underlying biology. These biological modalities are things like phenomics, where we collect microscopy images of cells, proteomics, where we measure the protein profile, transcriptomics, where we measure the RNA levels, and genomics, where we measure the DNA levels. Collectively, they could enable us to build multi-scale representations of biology. In biology, unpaired data is the norm because these experiments are destructive processes. You can only measure one modality at a time before the cell is destroyed. In our paper, we propose a simple way to match across single cell assays, such as phenomics with transcriptomics, by aligning unpaired samples across different modalities. We start by collecting data where we have applied different treatments, such as gene knockouts on different cells and collected the associated phenomics and transcriptomics assays. We then train two classifiers, one for each modality, to predict which gene was knocked out for each cell. The fitted classifier outputs the conditional probabilities of specific gene knockouts. We can use this classifier to understand the difference between cells within a perturbation group by reading its predicted probabilities. For example, for this cell, the classifier does a good job of predicting which specific gene was knocked out in this case, gene C. But the CRISPR guides aren't perfect and may not have affected every cell in the dish. The cells that didn't get affected will tend to be classified as control cells by our classifier in both modalities. And finally, we may have cells that had numerous off-target effects from the CRISPR guide. For these cells, the classifier's predictions will tend to look very different from everything else in their respective modalities. These conditional probabilities give us a common space in which to match across the modalities. We can then use techniques like optimal transport-based matching to align the respective modalities. Although we won't get an exact match, the matching algorithms will return a soft matching where cells that look similar according to classifiers are matched together. By matching unpaired samples across modalities, we can then use the aligned samples as proxies for paired samples and apply existing multimodal representation learning techniques, which paves the way for more powerful models that have a detailed multimodal understanding of biology.